hi my name is Michelle and today we're going to go over the six things that we did to get our home ready to host on Airbnb for the very first time. We're also going to show you some photos of what it looks like when we have it staged when our guests arrive. So you're going to be hosting a variety of people, anywhere from singles to families to people that are on business trips. So you're going to want to make sure that you have your home as accommodating as possible so that you can get those five star reviews. So the very first thing that we did was we started to declutter. And I mean, you go through absolutely everything that you have. You're going to want to be very ruthless with what you get rid of and very intentional with what you keep. Most of us collect more things than we realize and it's always a good idea to go through and to look at things with fresh eyes and that way you can really make some progress on decluttering. What we did is we started at the front door and we just worked our way all the way through the house. Look at what you have sitting out. Can it be stored away? Do you even need it at all? Um, you're going to want to look and see do you have too many knickknacks? Do you have too many tables? Do you have too many chairs? Um, magazines, books, you know, all of that kind of stuff. So you're really going to want to look at everything that you have and make some decisions. Really keep a critical eye when you're going through each room and make three piles. Keep, donate, and then a pile where you're not sure. It's always best to make a decision, a yes or no decision right away, but at the same time, if you can't, don't get hung up on it and have it stall any progress that you're making. Just move on, but have a designated area so that you can pack things away until you're ready to decide. Just be sure you don't leave it in your living room and don't leave it in your bedroom. The second thing that we did was to reevaluate everything that we have. It's very similar and it goes along with decluttering, but it's looking at things just a little bit differently. So what you have when you're looking at things, does it still serve you? Um, does it have a purpose? and there's, you're gonna to wanna to prioritize. Is there something that can't wait, like a broken door, or is it something that can wait a little bit, like maybe your furniture is just a little bit worn, still looks good, it's still serving a purpose, um, but you, know, you, can, you can replace it down the road or replace it as you go on. But you're just gonna to wanna to prioritize what you have. Another misconception is about dishes. So I know of a lot of people that keep tons of dishes in their, in their cupboards for every day. You don't need to keep all of that in there. Just keep a set of four to six, depending on your family and depending on how many guests that you can host. Do the same thing with your linens. Decide whether you'll be keeping your everyday towels and sheets and using them for your Airbnb guests, or if you'll be buying separate ones that you use only for your guests. You're going to want to stop and think of the pros and cons of everything that you have and whether you keep it or whether you donate it. As for decorations, what we did and what worked really well is we took everything off of the walls, took everything off of our countertops, the dressers, everything from all over the house and we put it all in one large pile. And what we did is we looked through and we decided this is something that I like, this is something that I didn't like, and then what we had left we put up and we worked on just one wall at a time. If we weren't able to finish an entire room, that's okay, we just moved on. We just worked with one wall at a time. When that was finished, we moved on. We had two models through this process and one of them was less is more and the other thing was either use it or lose it. The third thing that we did was to clean, 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 and I mean a very deep clean. When you go through this whole process, you can do it area by area um, where you declutter and then you evaluate and then you clean and then you move on to the next room or you can just do your entire house declutter, your entire house reevaluate, your entire house to do a deep clean. It's up to you and how you work with things. Again, we started at the front door, which is the first impression that your guests are gonna have. Aside from the obvious general cleaning that you're gonna to wanna to do, you're going to wanna critically look at your home. You're gonna to wanna to look up at the ceilings for any cobwebs that might be up there. When was the last time that you uh, washed the trim on the floor? When was the last time you washed your drapes? When was the last time you washed your windows or the trim around your windows, your vents? Um, your couch, look at your walls, look in your closets. Do they need to be washed down or do they need to be painted? You're gonna wanna go through each area very meticulously. So you're gonna clear off all the 
countertops, all of the tabletops, um, clear out all of the drawers, the top of your refrigerator. You're going to want to take everything out of the closets and the drawers, etc., and then clean that all out and be very intentional again with what you put back. Now is the time to take care of the stain that you have in your carpet. Or if you have like 15 pens in your junk drawer but only three of them work, you have random batteries in your junk drawer, take care of all of that stuff and just go through it, clean everything out, put back only things that are necessary. The fourth thing is staging. We stage everything to be as guest friendly as possible. We remove all of our coats and shoes from the front closet so that our guests have an area for their own things. Any leftover items we store locked in our garage so that the only things that we have in our closet is a vacuum and a couple of umbrellas for our guests to use. In the kitchen, we remove our everyday pot holders and towels and we purchase some simple white ones that we keep there that we use only for Airbnb. We like to use the white ones so that they're easy to clean. We just bleach them and they're inexpensive if we do need to replace. We also stage our cupboards so that they look neat, organized, and clean. Everything is put in intentionally and orderly. There's no overcrowding and we also like to have the counters pretty. Under the sink in the kitchen, we wash that out and we only keep a few things under there. In one basket, it has some simple cleaning supplies and then in the other basket, just a various size of garbage bags. We like to use baskets in there because it helps to make it look a little bit more orderly again and any overflow things we keep in the garage. Less is always best and it's easier for our guests to find what they need. For the refrigerator, we wash everything inside and out, including all the drawers. We take off any invitations or photos that we might have on the front. And then we also don't go on any large shopping trips before our Airbnb guests. We try to eat up all the food that we have in there. And then anything that's left, we pack with us because we're normally camping when we do hosting on Airbnb. Guests really appreciate having a clean, empty refrigerator when they come. We also have a large kitchen pantry that we purge and we like to keep pretty orderly on a regular basis. Before our guests arrive, I remove all of the food that we'll be using while we're gone, and then I clear off one or more shelves for them. Even if they don't use all of the room, they really appreciate us thinking of them. When we stage our living room and family room, I like to keep it pretty clean, pretty clear. Yep. The only things that we keep out are a few throw pillows and maybe some blankets to make it homey and inviting. All of the toys we have fit into four bins and those bins go into a storage bench that we use for our coffee table. We have four bedrooms and we chose to purchase all new linens for them. We went with 100% cotton for year-round comfort. We purchased a variety of pillows, um, nice sheets, duvets, down comforters, and then we also have two mattress pads that we put on each bed just for comfort and also for protection for the mattress. Since we've purged our clothes, we don't have a lot of stuff in our closets. When we have guests, we take anything with us that we'll be wearing, and then anything extra, we put in a spare hall closet that we have upstairs. We have a very simple closet organizer, and part of that has some shelves where we keep bins, and in those bins we have our t-shirts, our socks, sweaters, and, and all of that kind of stuff. So we bring those bins with us to the camper when we host, and then that way our guests, again, have a closet that's empty for them to put their own things in. To stage the bathrooms, we remove all of our everyday towels and rugs and replace them with ones that we purchased strictly for Airbnb. The only other things that we keep in our bathroom cabinet is a hair dryer and then a first aid kit. Since we don't have a ton of products that we use to get ready in the morning, we keep our things in a travel bag and that way it's easy for us to take with us when we have our guests. If you have a ton of products or medications, you can always take them with you, put them in totes or lock them away in a closet. The fifth thing that we did was the outside. Take a good look at your yard and the outside of your home. Are all of your lights working? Do you have toys or flower pots laying around and piled up? Can they be stashed in the garage or maybe in a shed just so that your yard looks tidy again? Take a critical look at everything and decide what you want to tackle. That doesn't mean that you have to paint your house or hire a professional landscaper, but it does mean that you'll have to weed your flower beds and maybe prune some dead branches out of a tree or something like that. You're also going to want to plant just a few annuals in with your perennials so that it looks nice and inviting for your guests. 
Do you have a deck or a grill that they can use? Be sure you clean it off, have your propane tank filled, and also show them where the grilling tools are. Even if they don't use it, they still really appreciate having the opportunity to. We really try to look at staging our house inside and out more like a bed and breakfast with attention to details. In the spring and summer, we plant annuals and have other flower pots. In the fall, when the flowers start dying back, we put pumpkins out and just have it look very inviting again. And the last thing that we did to get ready for hosting Airbnb and the thing that we get asked the most about is privacy and security. People ask us all the time, what do you do with your documents or important papers or things that are special? We've purged our paperwork and most of our bills we can access online. Anything that we have left, we're able to put into um, hanging files in a tote and then we're able to take that tote with us when we leave. The other thing that we do for security is we have a keyless entry and each guest is given a unique code and then after their stay it's deactivated. And that's it. You don't have to do everything that we did, but you will need to declutter, clean, and think of security. As a bonus tip, something that we've learned is to take a few months off to get any projects done and also to enjoy your summers more. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and that you found value in it. Please give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Bye. can show you how it's... Nice. Nice. Great job. All right.